everyone. Welcome back to Namaste Village. I am upstairs, as you know, recording these short beginnings for our daily lessons, while at the same time finishing the journey in Italy. Thank you so much for holding the space while I was gone. We are also allowing Joel Goldsmith to guide us into some of the deeper experience of what it means to be awake. We've talked about immortality. We've talked about letting God use us. And today we're going to be going in a very interesting, slightly different direction. So let me read a little bit here from this quote by Joel Goldsmith. He says, spiritual student, rejoice as the outer building tumbles down for the inner temple is to be revealed. Isn't that interesting? Rejoice, give, give your, your, yourself to this, the joy of knowing that the outer building or your ego or the structure that your ego has built to identify something that seems vulnerable to time and space, rejoice as that building begins to tumble. And sometimes that is not exactly fun but he's still asking us to rejoice because now we know what is happening. We know that this is not the end, but the beginning of our true life. This is the very beginning of us living within our real self, our higher self. So let me read further. The mind of the individual seeking help is the Christ mind awaiting recognition. The Christ mind is in you now because that is your eternal nature but it does wait upon your recognition so why continue to wait let's live from that place let's recognize that in each other no matter what no matter what seems to be happening whether that person realizes it themselves or not it is up to me to perceive it in you because this is the gift i'm really giving to myself i can't know who i am unless i give that gift to you so let's not wait for that Okay, here we go. The man who has his being in Christ finds his capacities and abilities in soul. Not in the ego, but the soul. Not in the brain, not in the body or the muscle. We find it by being in Christ. We like to say that Christ was not the last name of Jesus unless we can all claim that name. Not as our last name, but our first name. We are all called to be the Christ or the extension of the love and the loveliness of God here in the earth. And as we do that, as we extend that grace, as we extend that love and that harmony, what else can we do but rejoice? Even though the walls may be tumbling all around us, what can we do but rejoice? So I'm rejoicing that you guys have Vicki and Sheila there to guide the session into even higher experiences and and understanding so i'm going to turn it over to you guys thank you so much have a wonderful session and i'll be back there very soon welcome everybody to our namaste village session and also on zoom i'd like to pass the session over to vicky all right well thank you my dear brother here i am in massachusetts and we're at a retreat, a watch party, watching The Chosen, I told you yesterday. And first, I have to say, what a miracle, what a, a holy setup, that whatever it was, four or five weeks ago, James is in Ahihi prepping these little launch pads for us every day. And this week and today, the message is to rejoice when the outer temple is falling down. And we are in the very midst of appearances that look that way and he this very day is on his way to um israel now i don't know how far he'll get into israel because um the borders are closed but you know james whatever form it takes he has invited every one of us and everyone we know to join today to do a silent meditation, to keep that high watch, to keep just what he's talking about today, to keep rejoicing in the face of what looks like total destruction, total hatred and total collapse. And it's not an easy thing to do. And 
we do we help each other stay stable in that vision and in that experience of no longer identifying with what's out there but identifying with the love the continual expression experience of love that's rising in us as our own Christed being so today Sheila I think went back home to pack up and come back to move to Ahihi and so we're on our own and I thought what a wonderful time to invite all of you to join with me and share for the rest of the week not just today and Scott I know Scott's there so I'll turn to him too but at the, at the retreat here, I did invite one of my sister, my phone, and it's hard to hold it. I'll lean in. All right. So I invited, I want you to meet Donna. Donna's authored several books about um, breaking the spell of external identity, of body identity, and waking up to the Christ of our being. And this is exactly what we're doing every day. We help each other by reinforcing, coming up with all different ways that we can play the game of waking up together in the face of what looks like fear and disaster around us, especially at this time. So I want to invite Donna to share just for a few minutes, a little bit of what her experience is. Shemazon or no, no. Lulu.com. Lulu.com. And, um, but since she was a child, as many of us, she was aware of her soul, her spirit identity, and it has taken her to where we are all today, living in Christ as the Christ and given whatever she's given to do and share. So go ahead, honey. Oh, man. Feel. Thank you so much for that. I love Vicki. I love all of you. <laughs> um, I don't need to meet you to love you. Um, my name is Donna, like Vicki said, <clears throat> and I didn't know I was going to be writing books. I had no idea I would be writing books. I just, only, I had to ask myself, uh, I was in engineering and I had to ask myself, wait a minute, this doesn't feel aligned with my heart, with my passion. And so that began me turning back to center and, com and coming back home. And a lot of, of course, other tower events like Vicky and uh, James was just, just sharing about things tumbling around us, led me to go in deeper, right? Um, so anyway, the books that I write are about consciousness. And, and like I said, I know I'd be doing that. I just, my first book was to shift from the head to the heart. And it's called Deliberate Consciousness, and you can't miss it because it has a huge heart lit up on the cover with rays coming out of it. And so it looks like we lost Vicki. Um, we'll just wait and see if they can come back again. I know I may look like uh, James Twyman, but I'm actually um, his brother from the same father. <laughs> Hi, Bob. <laughs> I'd like to uh, let you know that I just finished a month long uh, devotional uh, session with um, Andrew uh, Hewson and Matt Garrett in a non dual devotional. Um, so I just want to. Um, offer that it's such a opening for my mind and opening for my soul and my heart um, to really know that I'm in service to the one shared awakening that we all are participating in here and the one shared mind so it really has taken me in my mind up and expanded my heart and mind to a whole new level of uh, uh, awareness and so I'm so grateful for that experience and I extend that to you if you like as well. 
um, this Thursday, they're starting a week-long um, non-dual devotional. So you can just go to their uh, website, non-dualdevotional.com. Um, and so, what else did I want to share? I wanted to say that um, what James was talking about, the outer temple and the inner temple, uh, that really helps my mind to realize that um, I always thought along the way that when someone said, um, improve yourself and, uh, or to get a better self, that was the self they were talking about when they were mentioning um, uh, love yourself. So <laughs> that really ends up to be a, um, a very narcissistic experience that many of us experience together, I'm sure. And uh, until we realize that there, um, what James is offering is that when that shell falls apart, we actually can access the uh, true self that was always there waiting for us to look at. And that's one of the things that um, the non-dual devotional offers is to do what they call, in a different languages now they call it extraction. So we actually get an opportunity to um, not only, like I used to just be a passerby of all these thoughts and judgments that would come on or hand them over to the Holy Spirit, which was great. I didn't have to take responsibility for them. <laughs> but now I take uh, impersonal responsibility for everything that comes my way, every image that comes my way, every judgment that comes my way. Um, the term is used that we are the 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 world is ripe for harvest, so that allows me to take in everything that um, is good for um, transmutation. Is another word that they use. So it's not just transformation or transfiguration, it's transmutation, taking what uh, looks like fear, but really what fear is, it's a contracted love. And so to look at that fear and to um, be willing to hold it and, not, and to, to accept it as um, something that's just concealing love. And so I, I love the word grace and to hold it with grace and to be willing to do that forever. And then that just takes me to the next step of um, um, in service to the whole mind, to the one mind that we all share together, to offer that to the one mind in service. So I, I took something that was concealed and now I'm, I'm in the process to uh, look at it and let it be revealed as the true memory of love, ultimately. And so the invitation is to consistently remember um, that we are love. Remember that we are God. Remember that we are the true self, not the little s, that uh, self that I thought I was for a long time, and I still sometimes do. <laughs> but uh, that's part of the journey. Let's see if Vicki is back. Are you back, Vicki? I am, Chris. Here I am. Thank you. Thank you for that sharing. And that's what we can do. It's so, it, I don't know, it fills my heart to listen to each other mm. and how we keep our vision mm -hmm. and how do we practice it in the face of extreme circumstances like we're in now with the Middle East. So um, I'm going to pick back up on Donna and then we'll go back to your, to Ahihik and to your family there, see who would like to share and then to the Zoom room and see who would like to share. And remember, the question is, how do you keep your vision? How do you stay steady in, the, in your experience of being the Christ in the face of things falling away in front of us? Okay. Okay, I've got the question. Got Thank minutes. you guys for your patience. And um, so how do you do that? I can, I can say how I've become aware of doing that. How I've become aware of doing that, of staying centered, staying aligned, and being remaining neutral while all the other polarizations are at play and, and consciousness is fragmented out. I really just get still. I just get still. And I, there's nothing that I reach for. There's nothing that I do. It's not, and I don't even choose to focus on the breath. That's also an act. 
I let go of everything. I release everything and anything that is an activity or has any sense of um, quantity to it. I release, like, I know I've heard the phrase, the quantum field, there's no quantity to it. So I don't understand that phrase. I just get empty. I get completely empty. I become no thing. And I discover I'm everything. And it's the most miraculous shift that we can have. And when I become nothing, not even become, that's an improper word, right? Tricky vocabulary. I don't have to become it. I'm already it. And the realization of remaining as that true light is eternal. It's not a state. States come and go. States come and go. They're temporary and they belong to time. I'm timeless. I am timeless. I am ageless. I own it. I claim it. I love it. And I share it. And I really thank Vicki. Thank you, honey, for this moment. This was beautiful. I love sharing light. And it's so wonderful. I can't tell you when I see faces of light shining back at me as, as, as this, as you all are. And we both know there's no you and me. That's just tricky terminology. So thank you so much. Thank you. Namaskar. Thank you, Donna. So that's Donna, one of our sisters here watching The Chosen. And you can Thanks. see Donna's got a bunch of books on lulu.com. Donna, how do you spell your last name? C-B-O-S-M-E. Cosme. She's very cosmic. As it, <laughs> yeah, as you intergalactic. Can say. Yeah. Intergalactic. Another <laughs> intergalactic funny. ambassador. So um, thank you, everyone. Okay, let's see. Who else? Anyone there? In, in, yes, go ahead. She's going back any, to keep I'll watching. Anyone... Yep. Um, anyone there in Ahihi at Namaste would like to take the mic? And for the last few minutes, we will turn to Scott and um, let Scott maybe wrap it up and maybe give us a song. We'll see what he wants to do. <clears throat> oh, thank you. Hello, my name is Hello. Mark. Thank you, Mark. Um, I was trained in the Native American church to pray to the water and to drink the water and that the water flows through me and my prayer flows through me and it flows wherever water flows, it evaporates. On the morning of 9-11, I had chosen to make a homeopathic tincture out of pink rosebud blossoms. I had a large crystal set up in the sunshine and I had a vessel of water that had rose uh, petals from this pink radiant rose, which to me represents love. And I had it set up for that day to distill that love essence of those pink radiant blossoms into the water so I would have it distilled. Then I learned from neighbors that 9-11 has happened. And I watch at the neighbors this terrible thing that is happening. And then I go back to my space and I think, well, what an amazing thing that I am doing this love distillation on this particular day. And at the end of the day, I contemplated, what do I do? I made the distillation, put it into a jar, had a bit of the water left, and I had the rose petal left as well. And I decided what I would do is take them and put them out into a lake, happened to live at a lake. I would put them out into the lake with this prayer of love that it go into the water that it evaporate, that it travel over to the Middle East, and that it bring down the prayers of love. So today I am renewing that. When I drink water, I pray love to that water, to this glass of water. I drink that water, love. It passes through my body, 
It goes where it goes. It flows into a river. It evaporates. God, may it go to the Middle East and anywhere else where we need love. I encourage others to do the same. Thank you. Oh, thank you. That's beautiful. Is it Nora? Thank you. That was a beautiful experience. Thank you. Anyone else there? Should we turn to the Zoom room? That was Norma. And Norma. Um, I just, I'm so grateful for her prayer. I just finished a seven day water fast. And so not only did that, uh, I was consistently doing the ritual. Now I realize it, but also it's another act of devotion to um, let go of form and to put my mind into spirit and devote my mind. Um, Vicki, you had uh, Mary, Mary, you mentioned Mary yesterday. So I, I went and um, actually uploaded the app called Pause, Pause for Inspiration. And yesterday okay, we mentioned uh, the four um, agreements, but she has the yes. four. She has the four decisions. So I'm just going to take a moment to read those. Oh, thank you. Perfect. The first one is to pause the decision to stop in this moment. The second one is to step back the decision to get out of my own way. And then the third one is step aside the decision to invite inspiration within to help. So beautiful. And then the last one is to let inspiration guide the decision to choose my inspired mind and follow Pete, the peace and the wisdom of inspiration. So just review its pause, step back, step aside and let inspiration guide. Thank you. Steps to hear the Holy Spirit. Go ahead. Sorry. We're complete here. All right. Let's turn. I think Sharon might have something to say. Judy, Mary Ann, who else is out there? And I, and Judy, okay, I see a call there, but I can't do anything. So Sharon, why don't you start and um, you have to unmute and then we'll go to Judy and a call day. Okay. Good morning. Thank you for this opportunity. Thank you so much. It's great to see you all and to be here with you, uh, mighty companions. Um, I, uh, James has invited us to pray uh, for this nightmare that is going on and the word nightmare came to me and i thought of course this is the best way that i pray is to see it as exactly that it's just a nightmare it's a bad dream that we're waking up from if we so choose if we so hand it over to to love to heal and to remember that we are not a body, we are free, we're still as God created us. Um, when we see the bodies, as this is what we're being shown on TV as bodies um, in a nightmare. And I just remember that the best thing I can do is to withdraw all of my attachment to this horrific scene to say, I don't know what this is for. And I trust that our one mind will heal this. And so I sit here and I talk to the one mind and know that my words are going into the one mind, that that power of my words and your words together, it expands into this great, powerful awakening. And I trust in that. That's we awesome. trust in that with you, Sharon. Thank you so much. The word, we, you speak the word of life and dismiss the nightmare. Thank you. We pray the water, we sing. Okay, who else? Judy, did you say you? Did I see you there? Thank you very, very much. This is such an important time for us to hold, hold the higher ground and not allow our own fear thoughts to come in and mine are huge. So I appreciate the reference to water. The, the Native American Indians used to use, well, the Great Lakes were a, a marvelous spot for, for throwing in of anxiety and fear. And I have actually gone to the Great Lakes and dealt with some major issues at their shores. And now with my mind, uh, I'm at Lake Huron's side, putting all my fear thoughts into that beautiful, beautiful, clean water, letting God take over. This is my, this is 
this is my stability. God is in charge. Whenever I come with complicated thoughts that blazes through, God is in charge. And I, 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 it, it takes the responsibility of solving it off of me. And I realize I'm just a child. And if I squawk and scream, the peace is not heard. So it is entirely up to me to manage my mind. I find taking deep breaths help. I also find not listening to my own opinion helps a great deal. And then going to do something for someone else. It matters not. And if it happens to involve little children, all the better. But for me, doing something for someone else, but throwing it in, into Lake Huron, I really appreciate today's gathering. And I'm looking forward to our strength on Saturday, sending a great cloud of love out. And I thank you, my mighty companions. So we gather, we gather, we love, and we do the best we can. But ultimately, guess who's in charge? God. That's right. <laughs> so we're, we're home free. We just have to keep our eye on the prize. Thank you so much. Thank you, Judy. Thank you. Okay, we're rejoicing in that God's in charge. Thank you. Akalde, and then let's go to Scott. A short one, Akalde, if you can. But you can talk more tomorrow. <laughs> well, I don't follow the news, but the news has a way of following me when it gets extreme. And Marianne Williamson kindly sent me an email the other day informing me about the Middle East situation. The first words that came to me were, from unity, let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me. And the next thing that came to me from the Old Testament, nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they study war anymore. In Hebrew, lo yisagoyel Lo yamadu al milchama, lo yisagoy al gaichere, lo yamadu al milchama, lo yisagoy al gaichere, lo yamadu al milchama, lo yisagoy al gaichere. Thank you, Akalde. I do have I do have family in Tel Aviv. And close to home, my beloved four-legged four feline brother Juniper, whom several of you know was my graduation present from the Enlightenment Partner Program because he was called Juniper. Um, my indoor cat wandered, went out last night because I left the door open and he hasn't come back. And, you know, I, I, I don't have the, the strength or the interest or the desire to go through the whole long list of things that you do when a, an animal got lost. I just... I just bless him and and my brother-in-law and my nieces in Tel Aviv. And I'm just so grateful for this family. Thank you, Akalde. So be, before I turn it to Scott, let's take a breath and relax and be grateful for what we don't yet understand for the falling apart that's breaking open the grounds of happiness and peace and love that are coming through our every breath and that we are the vehicles. We are hitting that pitch of perfect peace because God is in charge. Thank you, everybody. Okay, Scott, anything you like, dear. 
No sound, Scott. You're muted. Press the right button. Okay. Perfect. So, uh, <laughs> two things are coming to me. One is, uh, I asked somebody last night how they feel about what's going on in the Middle East, mm -hmm. and, and she said, I feel the same way about the Middle East as I feel about all the suffering on the planet. And it really helped me stand back and recognize that, that there is suffering on this planet. And it's not just the wars, but it's just part of the, uh, the, the illusion. And, and, and to just step back and see see this with love. And the other thing that came to me is the end of the movie Witness with Harrison Ford and he is in, is Amish the right way or Amish? Amish. Amish. So he is in Amish uh, territory and he plays the good cop in the movie and there's a bad cop, right? And the bad cop uh, wants to kill him. And the, Am the Amish people surround them and just witness them. That's why the movie is called Witness. And Harrison Ford says, what are you going to do, Paul? You're going to kill me in front of all these people? And you see the, the falling down, the falling apart of this Paul fellow who has a gun and how he starts to shake. He looks around and he just sees that that his act of, of violence is being witnessed. The Chinese have uh, the word crisis in, in Chinese is a mixture of... Yeah, thank you. So it's a mixture of two words, danger and opportunity. And so when I ask, what is the opportunity here? The answer is, there's so many bright lights now on the planet witnessing. Mm -hmm. And as we hold up our hands and open our hearts and witness, this is not happening in a vacuum. The whole world is watching. And the more we can watch without taking sides and just be a blessing, mm -hmm. the more that the darkness is exposed to the light. And that's all that needs to happen. The rest is in God's hands. And the other thing I want to say is that uh, James uh, contacted me this morning and he said it's almost impossible to get into Israel and he's probably going to back, be back here on Friday. Mm -hmm. So he'll lead the guided meditation on Saturday right here. But James is always... Um, his life is full of miracles. So let's let's give him a, an ohm and hold the space. The possibility still exists that he can slip into that country. And if it's in the highest good for that to happen, let's offer an ohm of our support. Oh. just end with the song that I was singing before the beginning which expresses that there is a love here that has no opposition all embracing there is love all around only
Thank you, Scott. Thank you, everyone. Blessings. We sing the song of love and call everyone back.